All right, this morning we're going to learn how to split comma separated strings using T-SQL. And <clears> the <throat> first things first, which is this is probably the most inefficient thing to do in T-SQL. So if you actually are in a situation where you need to do this, um, the fastest and most effective method would be to use PowerShell. Um, I stored this, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog separated by commas in the object X. All you have to do in PowerShell to split the string is x split and then comma so this right here is the command to split right the i'm sorry to split the string um, with the values between the commas you'll see how fast that is versus in t sql regardless there's all kinds of different approaches to how to do this in t sql but you can see there's no contest on the code so uh, the first thing i did here in, in t sql is declare the variable comma <clears throat> which has the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dogs. All of those words are separated by commas. And I then declared three int variables, begin, which equals zero at first, count, which equals zero at first, and max. And I selected max, and this is just a little bit of logic here, equal to the full length of comma minus the length. And what I did is I replaced the commas in the variable comma with, um, with nothing. The reason why, what this does is this gets the entire count. What this does, I should say, is this gets the entire count of the commas. Because basically what we're doing is we're subtracting the full length of the string minus the length of the string without the commas. It tells us how many commas there are in the string. Now we're doing the while loop here. So while count is less than max, we know that max is the total amount of commas. And you'll notice that we're, of course, incrementing our count as each loop passes around. So we're gonna just pause briefly there because that's the beginning of the logic and next we're gonna start looking at um, this piece. You'll notice this right here, this logic, select car index comma, the, the um, expression comma, out of the string comma, begin plus one and then add to one is what we set begin equal to, okay? So this is what I want to do is I'm going to highlight what this value actually is. So I'm going to take this off and we're going to do the loop. Okay, so we're selecting this. All right, so we know that begin starts at zero. So the first time around, begin is zero. So what is the value here? It's 0 plus 1, so car index, where is the comma, uh, of comma, 0 plus 1, and then we're adding 1 to this value, right? So the first time, it's 5. Makes sense. We're already selecting the substring here of begin, which is 0. So this is going to, the first time around, is going to parse out the the. The second time around, it's going to start at 5. So is that correct? I mean, are we going to need to get the substring of five because it's where begin we're starting here at begin and you'll look that it is the fifth character right then we'll notice on this second what well, this yeah this is the first time around the second time around it's going to grab the 11th so where is b at it's the 11th right okay so that's where this logic comes from and that's why we're setting it to begin because each loop around actually what i want to do here this would make more sense we need to put the position, what really begin is, is the position of where it's going to start to start parsing, okay? Now, so we've, we've discussed the logic of that and you can see, you know, it'll loop through and it'll grab those and you can count them if you want manually. Now we're looking at the substring. So obviously, we're gonna get the substring of the string comma. Obviously, we're gonna start at begin, but now it's about the position. Okay, so in other words, it's about, I'm sorry, not the position, it's about the length, right? What we need to do is we need to make sure we're getting the right length. And that's why you'll notice, first of all, we're again using this same logic where this position is going to be at, determined by here. And we're subtracting it from begin. So let's look. And well, hold on, let's do it without this. <clears throat> so we have the quick brown fox 
jumped over the lazy dogs. And obviously that's correct. That's where this comes from. So this right here, what this essentially, the logic of this piece is it is doing that subtraction because obviously what we don't want, we don't want to start back at the beginning. So we want to look at what the, what the new position is minus what it was. So this is the, the key piece right here to this. Most people, if like on the fly, will easily be able to do this and this. Those are pretty simple to do. Um, it's usually the length that throws people. Remember on substring, it's the, this expression, it's the starting position, and then it's the length of what you're looking for. Okay, so this, uh, this question every now and then might, get, might come up in a job interview or whatnot. Like I said, I wouldn't if you're actually doing this for business reasons. It's much faster to do PowerShell. Keep in mind in PowerShell you can call in SQL Server Agent. There's no reason to do this in T-SQL as you can see. There's no contest between this, the complexity of this, and the simplicity of this.